everyone, Rick here again, chef on a budget. Uh, excuse, excuse my appearance, it's raining outside uh, and I'm feeling a bit slack today. Um, I don't get to work in the rain and the cold, thank God. Well, I could, but I choose not to. So generally on a day like today, I will do a bit of cooking, fill up the freezer, uh, just to make life easier down the track. So I've been to Aldi today, I've done a massive shop. I butchered up some chooks and some pork and oh god what else, all sorts of stuff and filled my freezer full of a whole heap of meat and, and stuff for under 200 bucks. Um, I've got some chickens going, um, I'm making some more chicken stock because uh, I ripped through my chicken stock. But I thought what I'd do today is seeing it's about 6 degrees outside at lunchtime today, freezing cold and wet. Uh, well, it's soup weather, isn't it? So what I thought I'd do today is make a couple of tasty soups. So today, the uh, episode one for the soup today, I'm going to make a roast pumpkin and sweet potato soup. Um, and to serve that, we'll be finished with a bit of creme fraiche or sour cream. Um, and the second episode I'll do today, I went to the butcher and they had a few bacon bones. So I thought when my stock's ready, I'll um, chuck some bacon in some of it and I might make a minestrone because I've got a couple of open pa uh, packets of pasta and a bit of mongrel this and that laying around in the in the fridge. So it's good to use it up, bit of a uh, couple of bacon chops left over from Aldi that I've cut up and, and put through it. So um, really, really simple. Um, so here we go. We'll start with the roast pumpkin and sweet potato soup. So, uh, very easy soup, um, as I'm sure everyone here watching has made pumpkin soup at some stage in their life. So, I'm just going to start now. This was on sale today, it wasn't at Aldi, it was somewhere else, but it was only 90 cents a kilo. Um, and that's why I decided to do this today, because it's cheap. Chef on a budget after all. So, I'll just take the seeds out, um, I will be taking the skin off. Um, if I'm doing a roast, Roast pumpkin just for myself, for home, to go with a, a roast dinner. I actually like leaving the skin on. Um, it's, it's a great flavour. I'd never do that in a restaurant because uh, pumpkin is considered pig food in a lot of countries as it is, so leaving the skin on probably wouldn't go down so well. So just cut it into manageable sizes, right? And then just go through and knock the skin off, right? Easy peasy. And then we'll cut it into smaller pieces for roasting. So I'll just quickly run through and do this at soup pace. I'm done. Uh, gone through and done my pumpkin. So, just top and tail that. Now I'm just going to do the same with my sweet potatoes. Give yourself a flat surface to work with, so it's not rocking around on you anywhere. And the other thing I should probably mention, when you're cutting up the pumpkin, you might have seen me pushing down like this. Please note that I did not put my hand on the tip of the knife, I put my hand right back. Put your hand on the tip of the knife and you slip. That point, I have seen people in commercial kitchens open up their palms of their hands and their wrists um, by doing that. Worst case scenario, stick a bit of towel over it. Um, as I always say, if your hands aren't in the road or your fingers aren't in the road, you can't cut them. All right, sweet potato, same deal, just peel down. You can use a veggie peeler if you're more comfortable with it. I've obviously had a lot of practice, so I prefer to do it like this. It's quicker. Okay, same deal. Go through and cut them into pieces. I'm gonna do that to two or three sweet potatoes because I'm gonna make quite a bit at once. So come back, I'll get you to come back and watch the rest when I finish doing my sweet potato. Okay, my pumpkin and sweet potatoes all cut up. So what I'm gonna do now, just bang it in a tray. I would normally use a bigger tray than this, but it's already in the oven, full of chicken carcasses, making a stock, getting it, getting it ready for a stock. All right. Okay, so what I might also add to that, I might just add a carrot, I'm not even gonna bother peeling this one. I will take the top off. Actually, how about one more? Okay, 
So now I'm just gonna give that a bit of a hit with some oil, bang it in the oven, toss it round, nice golden brown so it looks like your roast veggies, and then we'll get on to the next stage. Righto, so roasted off my pumpkin and sweet potato. So I'm just gonna scrape that out now into my pot. As you can see, there's a fair bit of colour on it. I mean, it is roasted. That's the whole name of the game. Okay, so we've got our sweet potato, our carrot, and our sweet potato, carrot, and pumpkin. Okay, get those last few bits out. Then I'll have to soak this tray, I think. Okay. All right, so I've done that. Now, I also roasted off just some normal potato and some onion as well. So same deal, straight in. Okay, now I've got chicken stock on the stove. So what I'm gonna do with my chicken stock, it's been uh, ticking over for a few hours, so it's, uh, it's done. So I am going to cover this chicken stock. If you've made chicken stock that I showed you last time, you've got some in the freezer, great. If you don't, just use what you've got to use. So I'm just going to strain my stock, as you can see, nice and dark. Okay, straight over. Right, and then we're just going to simmer that for maybe 5-10 minutes. Everything's already cooked. Um, so we don't need to cook it for too long and then we'll puree it and I'll show you how to finish it off. Now that's been bubbling away for a little while just on a very low heat. So now it's time to process our soup. I've got an old stick blender here that I've had for about 100 years. Um, you can do it in a blender, food processor, um, however you normally do your soup. Um, as I said, I've got a stick blender, so I'm, it's great because it means I don't have to uh, transfer anything. I can do it in the pot and then I can season directly in the pot. So I'll just quickly puree this. Okay, now to that, I'm going to add one full tub of sour cream, which is, I don't know, 300 grams of sour cream and I'll uh, pop that straight in. And I'll mix that through. Right now I'm just going to mix it through with a spoon. I'm just trying to decide whether I need some more sour cream in that or not. Season it just with the salt and pepper. So now it's time to serve. Um, I'm just gonna spoon some of this into this little bowl here because we're not eating yet, but I'll dish up for you guys. I'll just tidy up. Right, so here we have it. 
have it. I've got some uh, a little bit of um, chopped dill and chopped parsley. And then also here I've got a mixture of toasted almonds and toasted caraway seeds. And I'm just going to sprinkle a few of those on top. Oh, yum. Smells good. Uh, it's so cold outside. Okay, so you could add a bit, a little bit of cheese on top of that, or whatever you want, whatever you want to put on. That's just what I felt like putting on. So this whole pot has cost me around the ten dollar mark to make. Um, there's easy uh, ten to fifteen portions in this bowl, so you know it's it's cost it's cost hardly anything. We're talking cents per portion. Um, so I'm going to freeze this down now. Um, I'll have some for dinner first with some um, toasted Italian bread. Um, thanks for watching, Chef on a Budget.